All right, guys, just a brief video today, just recapping what we need to include in our film reviews, because I'm sure some of you have forgotten over the holidays. So we'll look at the task sheet first. Most of you should have already done your planning, so hopefully um, you know what you need to do, and this is just a bit of a reminder for you. Um, remember that your film review is going to be a written component as well as a filmed vlog component. So you have to obviously make sure that you write it first and then you turn it into a vlog. So with your vlog, it doesn't have to be absolutely word for word what you wrote in your written part. Um, you can use parts of it. You can use all of it. You need to fit in the time limit, which is down here. You've got um, four to five minutes for the vlog um, and seven to 900 words for the um, word count. So um, make sure that you are sticking to those time limits. So if you need to cut some of it down or be a little bit more informal and casual in your vlog, then go for it. The idea is to persuade and to entertain um, and essentially convince the person whether they should watch the movie or not watch the movie. Um, so looking at the task sheet, just make sure that you, um, when you're writing it, your opinion is very clear and you've justified it. So you have actually talked about all the reasons why people should watch the film um, or all the reasons why they shouldn't watch the film. Make sure that you talk about the Australianness of the film. So that's your social cultural value, okay, which is this part here. It's really important that you mention that sort of stuff because that's a big part of the criteria. Um, when it's talking about cinematic choices by the director used to engage and position the audience, it's really just talking about, um, you know, the how well the actors did. It's talking about how well they filmed it. Um, you know, for example, in Brand New Day, some of the fight scenes are a bit lame. In some of the um, scenes in Red Dog, you've got Red Dog and Red Cat with the CGI and they're fighting and that sort of takes away from the film. So talking about those sorts of choices by the director um, and maybe the landscape, what does it show Australia to be like um, as you know, part of the director's choices. Make sure you're talking about the use of music, particularly in Brand New Day, because it is a musical. You should be talking about how the movie is based on a musical. Um, if you're doing Red Dog, then you need to be talking about how the Australian kind of rock music has been used in the film and how that adds to it being an Aussie a film. Um, talk about the actors' performances, what you liked, what you didn't like. Again, overall, what you're talking about and what you're writing should match how many stars you've given the film. So if you've given it a two, then I'd expect that most of your film wouldn't be very positive for your film review. Um, if you give it a two and a half, three, I'd expect you to be a bit of a fence sitter talking about things that you did like and you didn't like. Um, if you give it a four or five, I'd expect most of your review to be pretty positive that you really enjoyed it. So make sure that you match those up. If you find that you have written your review and it doesn't match your stars, just change your stars. Don't change your review, okay? Because obviously once you've gotten into it, you might have changed your opinion on it. Um, so make sure you're referring to this section in your task sheet which you have emailed to you and it is on Andy. I do know that Andy is down a little bit at the moment, so just bear with us on that. Um, when you go to do your video, your vlog, um, I have set up an activity in Andy for you to watch that shows you some examples of um, vlog film reviews. You're welcome to go on YouTube and watch some as well. Just be aware that some of them are not exactly PG rated in some instances. So the ones that I've sent you are um, PG. Um, there's some language to use on there. I don't mind if you are formal in your language or if you're a little bit informal, but just keep your tone the same throughout. So don't go um, using slang terms and then suddenly start using words like um, the most significant choices the director has used is, and this, you know, that kind of language. Make sure that you're consistent throughout. Um, so when we look at the criteria sheet again, just a reminder that the first um, box here, this one is all about how you have explained how the techniques have been used. So you're looking at costume, lighting, dialogue, sound, setting, um, the actor and what the director has done to make um, the review, their review, sorry, what the director has done to make 
the movie engaging. So if I were you, when I'm editing, I would be going through and ticking these things, making sure that I've talked about them. The next one is um, on the review, uh, on the criteria here, is that you have justified your opinion using evidence. So don't just say, I hate this movie, it's lame. Okay, I hate this movie, it's lame because, and then give me an example from the film. This one here is whether you have used the organisational structure, so whether you have got correct paragraphing, um, whether you have um, drafted it, whether you've got um, you know, all of the things in the right spots, you've got paragraphing, your sentence structure is clear, it all flows well, it's not just you've done some word vomit and chucked it on the page. Um, this one down here is about your um, language use, so this is where you use your emotive language, your figurative, evaluative. So emotive is, you know, the, the stuff that shows emotion, obviously. Figurative is your similes and your metaphors. Um, evaluative is basically using language like it is a fantastic movie or it is awful, horrible. Those sorts of words give it value. That's what evaluative means. Technical vocabulary, if you're talking about any sort of um, camera techniques, if you know any of them, um, you can talk about them there. And then your last box here is your verbal skills. So your, um, your verbal um, skills are marked on your vlog. So your vlog mark is here, okay? Your writing mark is here. So you can see that most of your mark comes from your writing. All right, so make sure you're referring to the task sheet when you're actually doing it. So you should have already done up a plan, okay? You should have used this sheet. If you haven't because you didn't do it in week 10 because you felt a bit lazy, then you need to do that this week because your draft is going to be due on Friday, uploaded through ND. So you need to make sure that you have a title. Make it interesting, all right? Give me, um, you know, something catchy or funny or it expresses your opinion of the movie. You can have a look at plenty of film reviews online that will give you some examples. Make sure you've got an image. So something to do with the film poster um, or, the, or a, a picture from the film, like a film still image. All you need to do is type in Red Dog, click Google Images, find a picture, shove it in. Um, basic factual information, the classification. So is it P, G, M? Um, what kind of uh, genre is it? Who was the director? Um, star, star rating as well. So make sure that that is prominent. And in the past for Red Dog, people have put paws instead of stars. That's fine. Um, an opening statement or byline. So you should have like a, a sentence that says what your opinion actually is of the film. Um, so I might just see if I can find one really quickly to show you what the layout looks like. So, quick look. All right, so you can see here in the in what they actually look like. This one is Aiden's. So there's your title, the name, obviously his name. You've got the picture. You've got the genre, PG, the director, who it's starring who's the production company, how many stars. Okay, so that's what the layout should sort of look like. Your picture doesn't have to be that big. Okay, I'd probably say Adams is a little too big. This one here is not too bad. Um, so it's set out that way. Okay, um, the runtime as well. So how long the movie runs for is actually quite good too. This one's set out well. Um, so we've got Red Dog, Hitchhike and Kelpie. Sometimes you pick your dog, sometimes your dog picks you. That's a quote from the movie, so that's quite good as well. Um, we've got the director, um, rated, starring, overall rating, okay? So up to you how you want to do that. So back to your structure, making sure that your introduction you've got um, in your first paragraph, you talk about, well, obviously the film's name, all right? And when you're putting the film name in there, it needs to be in italics. So if you're saying Red Dog, okay, as in the movie title, you need to have it in italics. If you're talking about Red Dog, the character, no italics, okay? That's a proper noun, so it just needs a capital R and a capital D. Um, so that sometimes tricks people up. Make sure that you've got the genre, so family, friendly, comedy, whatever you think it is. Obviously do some research if you don't know. 
uh, the director, uh, the writer, and maybe who the main actors are. So your first introduction paragraph should give your initial impression of the film. So if you have a look at one of these, obviously you're not going to copy these because these will be through um, the plagiarism software, but you can see here that it is not um, a huge paragraph. It's just giving you a general overview of what it is. Okay. So you need to make sure that you are putting the right things in there. If we have a look at this one here, you should have this as well. Um, don't put too much information about the plot in there. No spoilers, please. Do not tell me who dies in the film or that at the end of it, um, Willie discovers he has a long lost brother in Brand New Day. Okay, don't tell me that because then there would be no point in me going to watch the movie. All right, if you do that, you will lose marks. Um, don't just list everything that happens in the film, okay? Make it interesting. It needs to be fairly sort of general. So you need to be giving me a very brief idea of what the movie is without actually telling me what happens. So think about how you would explain that to some way. Um, all right, paragraphing. Remember, you don't have to have a certain amount of paragraphs. You can have um, one paragraph about your plot summary. You could have two, okay? You could have two, two paragraphs or one paragraph about um, the evaluation, then not, it's not a really strict sort of structure to a film review. Just make sure that whatever information you're talking about is bunched together where it should be and then it flows well. So again, with the plot summary, you're not telling me what happens in a blow by blow, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened because you will find yourself with a very low grade if you do that. You are trying to convince them to watch it or not watch it, okay? So keep it brief, keep it interesting. You're trying to engage the person who is reading or watching your review. Right, the next part you are doing is looking at the actors, whether they were good, whether they were bad, why? Make sure you use evidence. Think about what your film looks, feels, and sounds like. Um, what was it about the movie that stood out to you? If you need to watch the movie again, then watch it again. They're available on ClickView, um, and I can send you those links if you need them, if you can't get them on the Andy page. Um, talk about um, the music for sure. Talk about the costume. Do they represent what Australia was like at the time? Are they realistic? Do hippies really drive around in flower adorned vans, okay, VW bugs. Do they normally act and speak in these particular ways? It's up to you what you find. Um, and your last, uh, sorry, then there's an analysis paragraph where you're talking about generally what did you think that the director did well? Um, you know, how Australian was it? Is there any sort of Aussie culture or does it represent the, the history of the time? So remember they're both set around the 60s and 70s late 60s, early 70s, both the movies are there. So talk about, have you got Indigenous people in the stories? Have you got migrants in the stories? Is it realistic to a mining town? Okay, um, and, you know, do you think that that's what mining towns are like or were like in the 70s? Do you think that um, Aboriginal people were treated in the way they were in Brand New Day? I mean, it is up to you. When it's talking about thematic content, um, thematic just means a theme. Is there any theme in it? Is there an Australian theme? Is there a reconciliation theme? Is there a, um, you know, sense of pride as a theme? Is there love or sadness, connection, um, man's best friend in Red Dog's case, those sorts of things. Those are all things. So you can talk about it if you want to. And then in your conclusion, this is where you're really summing it up. So you really need to say, all right, and I give it this many stars and this is why. I recommend someone should um, go and watch this movie and why, etc. Okay, so make sure you have all of those things. If you don't know what you need to include, then you need to really read over this document again. You need to go and read some film reviews online. You need to go and watch some film reviews online. You also need to have a look at this checklist. Okay, this has been put in Andy as a quiz, but if you want just the paper copy, I've emailed it to you as well. Do this checklist before you send your teacher your draft. Okay, make sure that you have done it properly. Don't just tick it, actually read it and then 
ticket. All right. You've also got some doc, uh, documents on the email that have got some useful adjectives, so useful words that you can use. If you use these kinds of words, this is going to help you be persuasive. All right, so use them. Um, I've also included a couple more on the couple more on the email as well that you can have a look at. So that's pretty much all I sort of have to say regarding that. Remember that your um, uh, drafts are due on Friday. If you have any questions, your English teachers are at school. You can see I'm actually in the library at the moment. So lock myself in the study room. We will email you back. We will try to Zoom you once a week and we will send you a video, either one that has been made by me or another English teacher, or videos for you to watch um, from the internet, okay, if you need to. So don't rush through all the work and then go, oh, everything's done, I get an extra three weeks of holidays. No. Make sure you're doing your work on time because you don't know at the end of next week they might say actually all the kids coming back to school and if you come back and say I've done all my work I'm gonna say here do it again all right or here's a textbook have a good one make sure that you're still catching up um, with your web wires make sure that you're still reading make sure that you don't run yourself into the ground though I don't expect you to be chained to your desk at all times all right this is a very strange, weird time. I've never taught like this before, so it's very interesting. Um, but just keep in contact, keep in communication. If you need help or you have a question, email me and ask me, that's fine. Or email and ask your English teacher, that's fine. Um, what else was I gonna say? I will try to do you guys later for my classes. Um, the rest of you, your teachers will get in contact with Zooming you guys too. All right, I think that is all. Okay, have a good day. Bye.